We are here, sir, for the reveal of the Macan EV, affectionately, internally known as the H2. And this good looking gentleman is named Robert, but Robert, please introduce yourself to the boys and girls at home, who you are and what you do. Good um, check. Well, my name is Robert Meyer. I'm the director for Complete Vehicle in the model line Macan. Uh, I'm with Porsche since more than 20 years. Started with, uh, on the ice side, with my first project was cooling in the Carrera GT, did several positions, was in product strategy, and then moved over to the EVs, did some time in the Taycan, and uh, now I'm here in the uh, Macan. The first job at Porsche being the Carrera GT is quite a first well, project, sir. It's quite lucky. <laughs> all right, so before we get into what I love, which is all the electromechanical systems and the electric motors and the battery packs, let's high level talk about what the Macan EV is. So this is your first EV SUV for Porsche, and it is being sold at the same time as the regular internal combustion Macan. So what are the high-level figures people need to know? You have two trim levels you're starting off with, Macan 4, all-wheel drive Macan, yeah. and Turbo Macan, which is the high output. Right. They share the same battery pack. They do. 100 kilowatt hours, 95 usable. Yeah, you're right. Ranges for the base model is 600 and 13 kilometers range of the uh, turbo model beside us is 591 in WLTP. So that is that is a very usable range. So you're looking at a little bit over what th three miles per kilowatt hour. Roughly, thereabouts. right, right. Talking about kilowatts with the turbo, we look on in overboost uh, on 470 kilowatts. Um, looking at the base model in overboost again, we talk about 300 kilowatts. So overboost is available during launch control and for short periods of time for under uh, wide open throttle applications. Exactly. exactly. So basically, whenever you need full power. You get it. You get it. So let's walk through the advantages of this product and what were your sort of your goals looking at this versus regular Macan? You're, you're the head of the project. What were your goals for your engineers? Well, the goals were, I mean, first generation Macan is a, uh, well known as a very sporty compact SUV with a high level of uh, everyday usability. So the, the goal for the next generation was to increase both sides. So to get it on the one side more dynamic and on the other, high, on the other side to increase that everyday usability as well. These were the big two goals. Nothing to do with being an EV. This is about making a better well, SUV, correct? Absolutely. What from an interior perspective though, this is a you know, the way I've always looked at Macans, for better or for worse, is they are big hatchbacks, essentially. They aren't the same cumbersome giant SUV that we're used to. It has the dynamics of like a big rear wheel drive Golf R. That's correct. First of all, we increased the wheelbase by 86 mil, which we'll find when it comes to the cabin. Uh, most of them you find on the uh, second row. Um, so your leg room, as well as your, your headroom increased quite a lot which makes the car in the second seating row even more comfortable. Um, and of course, because you don't have that big uh, powertrain, ice powertrain in the car, you find more space in the car as well as in the front end because there is no more engine in that front end, no more combustion engine. There's of course a, um, an electric motor there, but there's enough space for a frunk of 84 liters. And then for when it comes to the center console area, you have far more interior space because you don't have a transmission to deal with and all that. Completely stuff. right. We, we got plenty of space for cup holders and to put all your stuff. To. All right, let's talk about interior electronics. This is an EV. It is very important to your consumers. It looks visually similar to a Cayenne. I know that's by design, but it is running different hardware and software, correct? You're completely right. We designed a new architecture, new high performance computers. Um, the system runs on a uh, Android operation system but the looks are the same. What is the main advantage that this is running versus the older systems? Is it just faster, more compute power? Yeah, it's just more performance on board as well as a better connection off board. Uh, if we do anything like um, a voice control or um, maybe charge planning, we will do that um, on the back end to even improve the performance um, to really get best performance, very, very quick charge plannings into the car. All right, the last thing I'm gonna talk about before we head over to the engineering side of all this is exterior design and your coefficient of drag. So 
yes, now you have a programmable spoiler that can go up and down in the back. Visually, though, it does look very similar to a regular Macan, but with a better CD, correct? Yeah, we um, achieved a CD of 0.25, which is with this, this, um, within this class of compact SUVs, pretty good, I would say. <laughs> You're very um, And we achieved that by several things. We got these uh, adjustable um, cooling flaps on the front end, um, and uh, we got a completely flat on the body. We did the air curtains uh, to really get a nice flow around the front rims. And as I said, that adjustable uh, rear spoiler. Perfect. With all that said, it's time for us to go walk to the exposed underbody of this vehicle so we can talk about all the engineering, sir. Yeah, great. All right, Robert, this is what I want to talk about, the meat and potatoes of the all-new electric Macan. Malt or double wishbone front, multi-link rear, all the suspension components other than the subframes are aluminum. And you have, in the US, I think Air Ride is standard. You're right. And then in Europe, you have a mix of either steel springs or Air Ride. That's correct. Well, uh, the major difference is that we um, decided for two valve dampers. The compression rebound can be separated. Exactly, which uh, makes your range of comfort to uh, dynamics even bigger. And then your air springs are one chamber versus two chambers. That's correct. correct? Yeah. And then the big innovation, which I know you guys are very proud of, is you, the, for the first time ever, you've been able to package rear steer. And it's one, one motor in the back versus two on both. And you can, what's the degree of range? Like five degrees or six? Yeah, it's five degrees. And we, as you say, we're quite proud on that. Um, yeah, although we increased the wheelbase, as I said, we even more decided or opted for this uh, rear axle steering to make the car really dynamic if it needs to, but even more stable when it comes to higher velocities. The advantage obviously is that on the one hand, if you're on, on low velocity, you virtually decrease the wheelbase, but when you really drive fast, you increase that wheelbase, so that makes it really stable on the German Autobahn. And what was the reasoning behind not doing your lovely PDCC? Just not necessary for this vehicle? Um, well, not, not for this one. Um, yeah, there, there are different reasons. Uh, we won't go that much into detail. Perfect. Perfect. No, no worries. And in the back, you have an optional PTV Plus, That's which is a, amazingly an actual physical differential on an EV vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> but it works pretty well. Um, you will feel it when you have the chance to, to drive it. It's it goes sideways is what I need to know, right? It, a little bit, <laughs> if you know what you're doing. So what's the static weight balance of this? Yeah, we got a perfect weight balance of 48% on the front axle and 52 on the rear one. Oh, wow. Why, why go with that versus like, like a 50-50? What's the main difference there? Well, the Porsches are always a little bit uh, on the rear axle, a little bit more. We obviously do have a lot of more torque on the rear axle, so you want to put on a little bit of more weight. So this way you will be able, if you know what you're doing, to really direct, drive it a little dynamic. What is the, how do you shift power around? Is it typically a rear bias system? How are you shifting that torque front and rear? It torque? really depends. It really depends on what the customer wants. Normally, if you just go straight, you will have the major part of power on the rear axle. But then it depends if you like go dynamically and want to get it straight again, you put quite a lot of torque on the front axle for a short moment. It really depends on what you're doing. The last subsystem I want to talk about before we get into the electric motors is how your braking system works. It is now fully brake by wire, correct? You're correct, yeah. It is a one box design, so it's fully brake by wire. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it, you end up with a, because you thereby have a, a really ra wide range of, of degrees of freedom. So you end up with a really precise pedal feeling, um, depending on what the road conditions are. You got a nice feedback uh, to the customer by the brake pedal. What's the philosophy then of Macan EV when it comes to dynamics? I mean, Porsche is very good about making sure these cars don't feel like science experiments, and that you seem to not design your vehicles while they're not their EVs or internal combustion. So what was the, like, what were the goals when you sat down your engineers or the team, how this was supposed to drive? What were your key objectives for them? 
Well, the, the key objective obviously is that the customer has a direct connection to the road, to the road conditions. He has it by the seating position, he sits very low, we achieved a seating position of up to 28 mil lower than the first gen Macan. Um, you got a nice feedback via the uh, steering wheel as well as via the, uh, the brake pedals. So you want to keep the customer really connected to the street, to the road conditions, to what the car is doing in the moment. The, the question that a lot of people have is, you know, at least in paper as an engineer, you look at all the various subsystems and it's you know, whether you look at a BMW or a Mercedes or another premium brand, at least in the EV SUV space, the individual components all sound very similar. They all are air ride, they're all multi-link cars, they all have two motors. What about this makes this a Porsche product then? Right, well, as you say, the, the trick is to bring all the good components in and then to optimize the complete system. Not only optimize the dampers or the springs um, or the steering, but see the complete system and optimize that. And I think we got these really brilliant experts in, <laughs> in chassis dynamics at Porsche. And in my eyes, they did a brilliant job in really bringing this car again to an optimum. So what makes this a Porsche product is your ability to integrate all of these electromechanical systems and get them to work cohesively is what you're saying. That's it. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the trick is you need people who know what they're doing. Next thing to talk about, electric motors. So regardless if you get the base Macan EV or the turbo variant, you have one motor front and rear. The power outputs are dra dramatically different as we talked about earlier, but are the physical motors themselves different units? There, on the front axle, we use the same units for the base and the turbo. On the rear axle, the turbo has a much bigger rear motor, more torque, more power. But the innovations to the PSM motors that you have front and rear are constant, right? It's the same basic? It's the same basic technology, PSM motors. Um, on the rear axle, we use uh, silicium carbide power electronics which makes the, um, the motor even more efficient, but which uh, gives you the possibility of to, to really, as well, bring more power into it. How has your electric motor design changed? Obviously, the big thing is you've gotten rid of your two-speed gearbox, you moved to a single speed. Right. Why is that, and how has the rest of the motor been altered? I know that's the big one. Well, yeah, it obviously was a, a longer decision or a discussion in the, in the early phase of the project, but we ended up with a really nice rear axle motor with a wide, a wide range of a good efficiency. On the other hand, with a really great amount of torque. So we could really afford to skip the two, the two speed gearbox and go to a, a single speed transmission. And what's your cooling strategy for your electric motors? It's again, uh, it's, 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 it's based on a, on a water cooled jacket. We cool the stator down as we do have PSM motors, we don't have that much of a thermal problem on the rotor itself. So we just cool the stator on a, on a water base. Okay. And then the, then I guess the next thing to talk about easily is the battery pack. 100 kilowatt hour uh, total battery pack size. You have, how many modules are you working with? We do have 12 modules um, and we can use on, on this battery up to 95 uh, kilowatt hours of energy. And you've changed your cell design versus That's the outgoing Taycan. Now you're running prismatic, prismatic cells, correct? You're correct, yeah. Coming from pouch cells, we now use prismatic cells, mainly for packaging reasons. What is the serviceability like? Can you individually pull each one of the modules out and check their independent health and replace each one as they go bad? Yeah, we, we know exactly what the status of health is of each module. We know the temperature of each cell so we exactly know if, they are, if we are in trouble with a module, we can really service it, get it out, and bring a new module in. But they share one giant cooling plate, correct? You're completely right. What is the range of the cells you're working with? Like what's considered normal? What is its bogey number? When does it start pulling power? Right. Normal, normal temperature range is probably like between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, the upper level is roughly about 55 degrees Celsius where we then begin to go into a derating. And you're running what high and low temp circuit for your, your cooling strategy for? We, we do have, obviously the electric motors need a higher temperature level than the battery in a normal condition. So we do have uh, two circuits of cooling 
one for the uh, motors with the um, power electronics and the other one for, for the battery. What is your charging strategy for the battery pack? What, what kind of numbers are we working with and what is the technology that you have allow you to reach those numbers? Right, we talk about an 800 volt system. Um, we charge with a power of up to 270 kilowatts and therefore we reach a charging time we talk about 10 to 80 percent of roughly 21 minutes. Oh, I was reading through your, your engineering brief on this. You can also essentially break up the system into two 400 volts. Right. Why? Because they are in, in several markets, we still find a lot of 400 volt infrastructure and we, we would like to really use that in an efficient way. Therefore, we split the battery into two 400 volts battery, put them into parallel and therefore able to charge on a 400 volt charge of up to 150 kilowatts in a really efficient way. So we've talked quite a bit about the actual battery pack itself. Why go with a 100 kilowatt hour pack? You've seen OEMs go with smaller numbers and you've seen your American friends go with much, much, much bigger, <laughs> bigger packs. Why 100 kilowatt hours? But as I said, the, the main goals for this car was really sharpening the dynamics. So we opted for not that much weight in the car what we want to achieve are really fast traveling times from point A to point B. So we talk about fast traveling. So we opted for really fast charging and therefore not to bring another whatever 200 kilograms of battery to the car to really keep the car uh, very, very dynamic. So you've had the misfortune of answering all my questions for the last hour or so good. <laughs> on and off camera. And you're about to answer God knows how many more journalists. But the question I have for you is, why would your customer buy this vehicle? Like, why buy this over an internal combustion Macan or a, diff a different SUV from a different brand? What about this is so special? Well, um, with a Macan first generation, we offered a very successful model, the sports car in the compact SUV class. Um, and we shop both sides dynamics as well as everyday usability and therefore the customer again will find a very sporty compact SUV with um, all dimensions I mentioned increased. So this is just in your eyes a better SUV regardless of the fact that it's EV or internal combustion, correct? Correct. Perfect. So I can't wait to actually drive this thing in a couple months so thank you very much for your time Robert. Thanks for being here. Perfect.